Hey everyone, Shamia here, Just Shamia Show, with our beautiful, noted, talented photographer, Mariah Carl of Carl Photography. Hey girl. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, this is 23. This is our studio cat. 23. And you want to tell folks how he got his name? So he has his name because uh, he has 23 toes, and cats are only supposed to have about 18 toes, so he has really big paws. He's also known as a polydactyl or a Hemingway cat. Awesome. And he's such a sweetie pie. He is. He, he loves people. He likes hanging out in the studio and he sings to you at 3 a.m. <laughs> so it's fantastic, really. I'd be surprised if he doesn't answer a couple of questions during the interview because I know he likes to talk, too. He, he probably will. <laughs> okay. So before we get started, tell us what are you reading and what are you listening to? Um... What have I been reading recently? Oh man, um, I haven't actually been doing a whole lot of reading. Um, mm -hmm. I've been pretty focused on the business and um, well actually I've been kind of reading more of the um, blogs and, in, and some books on marketing. So not a whole lot of fiction right now, unfortunately not a whole lot of literature. Uh -huh. um, just kind of focused on business marketing. Uh, we're wrapping up the end of the year, so I'm trying to get ready for 2015 mm -hmm. and, you know, look at everything I did this year and say, okay, I'm going to do more of this and less of that, and a lot more of this, and that was a really bad idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what I've been doing is staying more on the marketing side, so pretty dry. Um, as for music, um, I am going away for a couple of days, going on a bit of a road trip. Okay. So I have actually been putting together, I'm at about two hours now, I am trying to find almost three to four hours of music that all directly relates to driving and road songs. Okay. So That's... it's going across every <laughs> single genre, everything from Willie Nelson's On the Road, on the road again. Uh -huh. to um, Midnight Train to Georgia. Damn, that's a good one. <laughs> yes. Um, uh -huh. Walk on by. Walk on by. Um, I'm trying to kind of keep it to driving. Driving. -ish. Okay. Um, Highway Star, Golden Earring, mm -hmm. Radar Love, uh, Wars, Low Rider. Yeah. You gotta have that good. one. Right. Um, there's some yeah. industrial songs. Um, I think there's like three different songs labeled Motorcycle. Uh huh. <laughs> but like three different bands. You might need to uh, share that with some friends. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's taking some time to do a collection like that. Yeah, and so, so far I've got almost about two hours. Wow. And people are kind of giving me new ideas. Uh -huh. I'm like, no, it can't be an airplane and it can't be this. And it's okay. I guess highwaymen, I guess horses are okay. Yeah. Because there's horses and then a boat and then a spaceship. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. all right. And Ghost Rider. <laughs> yeah, okay, close enough. Yeah. Motorcycles are all right. Yeah. So it's... Well, transportation song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's been a lot of fun kind of going through every single genre and finding this one common thread and then trying to sort of line them up together. Right. Okay, we got some country and some industrial and some R&B here. And we're going to throw in some folk music here. And, well, that's 90s grunge. I don't know where that one's going to go. Mm -hmm. Put that Put in, it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. Okay, I look forward to receiving my copy of that mix. I, I will send it to you. <laughs> so for those who don't know you, who is Mariah? Um, I am Mariah Carl. I am a photographer. Um, basically the gist of uh, you know what I do, it's on my business card. I steal souls and I sell them back at a profit. Hey. Um, and, and a little bit more polished and looking a little sharper too. I steal them, I polish them just a little just bit if a little they bit. want. Yeah. Actually the polish is up to you. Okay. Some people say I want no polish, no retouching, I want to be pure. Mm -hmm. Some people say just clean it up a little bit around the edges mm -hmm. and some people say I want a full makeover. You know, I want hair, I want makeup, I want retouching, I want everything, you know, different from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's entirely up to the client. But I've had the studio in this location since about 2010. This being Oakland? Yeah. Um, we're mm -hmm. in Oakland, California. The neighborhood we are in is Jingle Town, and it rides um, the 880 cut across it a number of years ago when it was built, but it goes all the way from the estuary to International to 23rd. Um, and then all the way uh, out to International. Mm -hmm. And so this neighborhood is one of the older neighborhoods in Oakland. It used to be ranches, and then it was factories. Mm -hmm. And then um, the factories closed down, and then it kind of sat for a little while um, 
and then artists sort of started moving into the old abandoned factories. And now every and then con then the condos went up. Right. Um, and now we're looking at the Brooklyn Basin being built with five thousand units. Wow. In the next ten years. Wow. Uh, that was Gene Kwan's last large project. Okay. And a lot of <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. Um, it's going up whether you like it or not. Right. Right. Uh, things are going to change whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. um, some people are. You know, vehemently opposed. Some people really want it. Mm -hmm. They think it'll improve things. And um, you know, if it's going to be here, I might as well find some way to make friends with the new people who are moving in. I guess that's right. Because um, I can't really, you know, make them go away. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that that's definitely happening. We have a new um, elder care facility going up right up the street, and they are wonderful. They've been a part of the neighborhood. They've interviewed us with the neighborhood. They've come to our neighborhood meetings. They awesome. they do not want a traditional elder care facility with just rows and rows of beds. They want a full community. Awesome. And so they looked. Um, they actually looked at building in Alameda for a number of years. Alameda kept blocking them. Uh, an old restaurant burned down, mm -hmm. and um, they bought the land and said, "We're going to put this here." Wonderful. And so that's going to be a big addition, um, I believe, to our community. I'm not too sure what the impact of the Brooklyn Basin is going to do. Um, well, I, I am pretty sure it will increase tra traffic along Embarcadero, so that will no longer be the secret route down the 880. Right. <laughs> no more speeding down Embarcadero late at night. When you didn't hear that, please. <laughs> right. In this, <laughs> no one does that. Yeah, you know? actually, no, the Embarcadero is horrible. It's yes. always busy. There's traffic lights everywhere. Do not take that road. Don't it's, take it's it. Awful. It's dark. Don't do it's it. scary. Right. <laughs> I keep forgetting just to talk down on my neighborhood because my oh. room keeps going up. <laughs> so Mariah from Jingle Town, <laughs> Oakland, want to ask a couple of questions about a few stories. Okay. So the first, um, everyone, unless you've been living under a rock, has heard about the protests that have been happening I nationwide. Drove, I drove through one the other night. Did you? Where was that? Um, gosh, it was right off the 80, turned on to Powell. I'd come home late from the meeting. Uh -huh. And it was actually a little peculiar because I'm not sure, I couldn't really get to the information fast enough because um, I was driving and not Twittering while I was driving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, but I noticed several cars had you know, broken down and then I saw another van in the middle of the lane that had broken down. But I was with a friend and I was like, you know, this isn't right. Why are there so many broken down if they're going to shut down the freeway, they probably brought in cars ahead of time to start slowing it down. Damn. So I'm hoping that was deliberate and very intelligent, not just an accident. Mm -hmm. um, and we get it closer and it gets worse and worse. I realize, oh, they're shutting down. Mm -hmm. So um, we go to exit the freeway, exit Powell, and I look left and there's you know hundreds and hundreds of protesters and hundreds and hundreds of flares and cops and you know semis and just no lights are working, everything's just kind of back and forth, mm -hmm. so we just kind of very carefully drove on through, went up to San Pablo, and sort of, you know, avoided the whole area. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things with the protests seems to be that they're still um, very isolated, and there's still the thing that the media will always attack, and the media will always represent, you know, especially with Oakland and many of the other cities, like, oh, there's a protest, oh, there's this, oh, there's that, mm -hmm. you know, oh, they shut down the, um, the 80 freeway at midnight on a, I think it was a Friday night. <laughs> midnight on a Friday. And you're like, I talked about that last week, I'm okay. just saying. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, but they rarely will talk about anything else in Oakland, mm -hmm. you know, so four or five square miles of, you know, how many square miles is all of Oakland, mm -hmm. you know, and they're like, oh, well, there's protests going on here. Well, there's also business here and business here. And, you know, my business is still going um, amidst all of the, the chaos. So let me ask you, let, ask you that and let me tee this up by saying so people are protesting nationwide after the recent murders of um, Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri um, by a police officer. He was shot and killed by uh, the murder of Eric Garner who was um, choked to death by a police officer in uh, New York's 
in New York mm -hmm. and the shooting of Tamir Rice in um, Ohio who was shot a 12 year old boy who was yeah. shot by an officer when he had a, a toy gun in the park after just seconds of an encounter. So there's this uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter campaign that's happening nationwide and people are protesting the injustice and uh, looking for accountability by police officers who are involved in these situations. Um, First thing, the Obama administration is pushing for body cameras for police officers. Do you think that will help? Um, well, you know, if they can't get the media to stay in the air because they keep having to go down and gas up in the middle of a protest mm -hmm. to have media blackouts, I, I'm, you know, it's so it is mandatory for police officers um, to wear name tags and badges with mm -hmm. signifying names and numbers. How many times are those blocked out? Right. Um, so uh, there's already been several instances of police officers having the dash cams. Mm -hmm. And funny they keep breaking right. all the time. And so I'm really, you know, also in a society where those actions within the police department, within the upper judicial system are accepted and nearly celebrated, mm -hmm. what is a dash cam? What, what is a body cam? Good. Like, great, you shot him, awesome, great. Good. We, we already have the cameras. How many of these instances um, have been on video? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I believe Oscar Grant was also on video. Right. Was, does it matter if the video is on a police officer or the video comes from a, a neighbor? cell phone or, mm -hmm. or Rodney King? Right. Uh, that was the first, you know, big video televised mm -hmm. one. Right. Everybody watched that. Right. So, how did that help him? Right. Um, so, I think in theory, a lot of people want to say yes, a video on the police department that will help. In reality, we have video. Each one of us has got a video camera. Mm -hmm. I mean, my cat probably should have his own video camera. Right. What's wrong with this little beast? Twenty-three blogs. Yeah, yeah. he should be blogging his own shit. <laughs> Um, you know, I think I even have a little flip cam somewhere. Yeah. We, we, we're tossing video cameras, you know, out of our ears, mm -hmm. and is it getting better? Right. And so that's where I'm a little, you know, I'm not sure. Okay. Because a lot of people say, oh, it'll solve everything. I don't think, it, if it would have solved everything, all of our extra video surveillance we have now would have solved the problem. When was Rodney King 90? Something. And there's videos that are even older. Message. <laughs> All right, so let me let me ask you this question. And so um, on the protests, mm -hmm. um, are the protests really effective? I mean, what you what you talked about just uh, uh, earlier was protesters blocking the freeway at midnight on a Friday. I mean, I even on uh, and I'm just saying segment proposed National Day without a brother instead of protesting on you know, a Friday after business hours, hey, start today, you know, at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday in financial district San really Francisco, right? Let's take all the bridges down. You know, if you, if you really want to be effective, but, but what as it being a nationwide effort, an even global effort, do you think that there's a message? Is it being effective? Is the protest helping anything? Um, you know, what's fascinating is I used to say no. You know, a number of years ago, before I even moved to Oakland, you know, I'd see them on TV. I'd hear a little bit around the edges. My friends, um, you know, would speak of, you know, the issues that we have with society. And I used to say, you know, maybe all the effort put into protesting could be put into doing something better, mm -hmm. something more. Um, and, you know, maybe spend one less day carrying a sign and spend one day feeding the hungry or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. And what I've actually found, in my opinion, has shifted is I really begin to see there's a lot of facets to the protests. There's one, um, the people who are, it's mainly an advertising campaign mm -hmm. um, of people who don't get media coverage. You can't go on TV. Um, you know, you don't have 10,000 bloggers. Right. And general conversation doesn't seem to be getting the message through. You know, talking to one person at a time, or two people, or three, um, that there are problems. And we, we, this country does have uh, problems, and they're being ignored. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you're screaming louder, they're still being ignored. You're screaming even louder, still being ignored. A window gets broken, still ignored. 
So do you think that the effectiveness of the pro, it's not that the protests aren't effective, it's just, is it a matter of the lack of media coverage or the spin of the media coverage where, like in the example you just gave, the focus becomes on the broken window. Right. Now they're looting and they're becoming violent, they're rioting yeah. versus the, the message of the protest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And But what we've already seen, you know, firsthand is the people who are doing most of the looting and the quote rioting, we're separate rioting from looting, from protesting, from cops, from the sheriff's department. Um, you know, none of these people are, are speaking to one another. And for many, Oakland is just a playground. Mm -hmm. They're coming out of Berkeley. Uh, they're coming out of other cities. They're other states, even. We've other, seen that. Mm -hmm. other states. Right. And the police themselves. Mm -hmm are breaking windows. The police themselves are dressing up in plain clothes and trying to incite a riot. Right. Um, so I think that the idea of the protests is getting the word out. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of nobody believes, you know, this is actually happening. As long as they can get their latte in the morning, as mm -hmm. long as they can get their latte, get to work, you mm -hmm. know, work their eight hours, go home, watch The Simpsons, everything's fucking okay. Right. It does not matter what's happening to your neighbor. It does not matter what's happening up the street. It does not matter what's happening to, you know, the locally owned businesses. Um, it doesn't matter that some guy in another state got shot. Yeah, that's those people over there. Exactly. It's over there. Mm -hmm. So once I can't get my goddamn spiced frappuccino, pumpkin, chai, <laughs> cinnamon, soy, low milk, and make that extra foam latte, well, now I'm angry. Right. So I'm like, well, but... I can't have my fucking latte. Oh, your friend died. Oh, well, maybe I should do something. Is that why? Well, where was that? How did that yeah, affect my I latte? Latte. Oh, oh, yeah. latte. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. Um, I've noticed um, it, here, here locally, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, campaign, a lot of the signs and the protesters that you see carrying them are white. Great. But there aren't that many African Americans here anyway that are on the front lines protesting on a daily basis. What does that say to you about the Black Lives Matters campaign? Um, and why that, do you think that is? If my ass was black, I wouldn't be on the front lines. Mm -hmm. I'd be shot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't blame anybody who does not wish to be on the front lines. Um, I, it's really tough because part of the argument is that it dilutes the black voices. Um, the other part of the argument is that, um, you know, it's true. Uh, a lot of my older friends who lived through, you know, the 50s and the 60s and protests and uh, other riots, mm -hmm. um, you know, a friend of mine just said recently, and we we're talking about um, Occupy, and it was around uh, the time of Oscar Grant, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some more protests, and um, the comment he made is, Nothing will fucking change until we get another Kent State. Mm. Until a little white boy is shot. Mm -hmm. Then the cops might like think about something. Mm -hmm. Then there might be a change. Um, so I think part of what it is is some people are aware of this. Mm -hmm. And they know that they, you know, I think they're hoping to have a bit of a buffer of, you know, well, they're not going to shoot the white kids who are protesting. They're right. not going to shoot a pretty little white boy that goes to Berkeley. Right. Um, and if they do, they know. Right. Whereas if it's or a little just, white girl whose daddy funds Stanford, right? right. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little white girl whose daddy's going working at Stanford. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have a problem. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was that one guy who was hit with a a canister mm -hmm. and occupy. He got all the press, right? Know, all the news. He wound up in the hospital for a few weeks, right? And was back out there, and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. and you're like seriously. Yeah, but the message was about him, not about the occupy movement. Right. I remember that. And so. Mm -hmm. What I think, you know, there have always been white allies, and I think part of it is their job, um, you know, if they want to be an ally, is to step up on the front line. Um, because how much of an ally, you know, can you be when, you know, your friend's like, hey, we can't go out tonight, you know, there's stuff going on, there's cops out, I don't want to deal with the police, I don't want to deal with being profiled. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, well, stay home, I'm going out without you. So 2014, we've moved from the Tuskegee Airmen to a white infantry in the Black Lives Matter movement. <laughs> well, hopefully it's our, our times are changing, I, I guess, um, a little bit, maybe. Sort of. Sort of. I think, um, yeah. <laughs> Not I, the same at all, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, at least that's what I'm hoping is mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. um, I, I might be a little optimistic. Mm -hmm. It could just be a bunch of white assholes trying to gain camera time. Um, 
But yeah, I think that, you know, the media is constantly ignoring, you know, the black protests and constantly ignoring black media or constantly portraying it. And um, I think maybe they'll, you know, some of the black people will figure that out at the community overall. And so they're like, all right, great. They won't listen to me. They'll listen to a white person. You white, you get up there, mm -hmm. you know, do something and don't fuck it up. Yeah. Well, just me a show our means of protesting via independent journalism and free radical thinkers like Mariah and Shamia. So check it out. Let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. uh, ice Bucket Challenge. Had you heard of that? I've heard of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Okay. Something about dumping a bucket of ice and you have to donate money or not donate? To raise money and to awareness money. For, for ALS. And they raised something like over 20 million celebrities were doing it all over. Right. I know celebrities were doing mm -hmm. it. And yeah, it was raising Money. money for ALS awareness. So Samuel Jackson uh, okay. issued a challenge this past week saying, hey, all you celebrities out there that jumped on the ALS ice bucket challenge mm -hmm. uh, bandwagon, why don't you take this challenge um, until there is racial equality and um, solidarity just say this chant, do this, you know, film yourself singing this chant, which ends in we ain't gonna stop till people are free. Now, I haven't seen any videos. The ALS challenge went viral, uh -huh. but here's a, a person who's using his celebrity. So Sam L. Jackson, we see him on the Capital One commercials. Yep. We know him from Snakes on a Plane, Pulp Fiction. I mean, he's made a lot of great movies and he's using a celebrity saying, hey, here's a challenge world. Um, this is a, a issue and all the rest of you celebrities just rally around this and support this from the ground up. Okay. So what is Have you seen any other celebrities? I, I, have, not, I have not seen the challenge. I've not heard of it. <laughs> Nothing. Do you think the idea of a challenge like this where celebrities really standing behind a cause like Black Lives Matter and standing for um, a, a, a reversal of, of social injustice um, by doing something like this brings more awareness as a, a way of using their celebrity in protest like it would help? Uh, um, or should they just focus on, you know, not releasing movies and making millions? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if they're only doing Capital One commercials these days. Right. <laughs> um, that is a tough one because, again, part of me really wants to go back to the do something more active as opposed to, you know, editorial or advertising. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I would rather, you know, spend the afternoon um, cleaning up my neighborhood hanging out with my neighbors, um, working with, you know, another black owned business, mm -hmm. if we're going to go with, uh, you know, specifically people of color, then saying a chant on TV. And the other issue that I have seen in the past with celebrities doing these sorts of challenges and telling, you know, a spoke down here, we're not some celebrities, mm -hmm. is it's a lot of still kind of not my problem, us versus them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how are, are they actually going out into the street or are they still kind of stuck in Hollywood where there's sort of the really, really underground guys of maybe racial equality because we all have $10 million here, one of the good black people. Mm -hmm. 